Hello everyone and welcome back to the War Thunder Survival Guide, where we show you the ins and outs of effective vehicle operation and comb the vehicle stats for every advantage so you can keep yourself alive, the enemy dead, and silver lions in your pockets. Today we'll be covering the LVT A1. It is a rank 1 reserve tank from the American Tank Tree. Tank highlights include amphibiousness, fast firing 37mm cannon, and 6 crew members spread out over the entirety of a very large tank. Drawbacks include lack of ammunition with explosive filter, very little armor, large size, and very slow reverse speeds. The LVT A1 is poorly armored, even for a reserve tank. Its armor is comprised mostly of rolled homogenous armor, with cast homogenous armor that is 94% effective, used for parts of the gun mantelet and rear gunner crew protection. Chassis structural steel with a 60% modifier is used for the tracks, and structural steel with a 40% modifier is used as a top rear covering. The lower glasses of the tank is comprised of 6.35mm of armor, with a varying slope between 40 and 89 degrees. The upper glasses of the tank is comprised of 6.35mm of armor, with a slope of 83 degrees. The front plate of the tank is more generously armored with 12.7mm of armor, and is angled to 30 degrees. The sides of the tank consist of 6.35mm of armor, with a 0 degree slope on the bottom, and a 51 degree or 11 degree slope on the top portion. The tracks and structural steel of the chassis are 15 millimeters thick. The rear of the tank is comprised of armor that is 6.35 millimeters thick, with the lowest portion angled to 62 degrees, and no angle on the large middle portion or upper portion. The turret is comprised of 12.7 millimeters of armor the whole way round, with a slope of 10 degrees on the front, and two highly sloped 60 degree cheeks. The very top of the turret has just 6 millimeters of armor, and is exposed from the front and slope to 74 degrees. The gun mantlet is very thick, much thicker than any other part of the tank, with 50.8mm of cast homogenous armor, and has a complex geometry and varying slopes between 0 and 81 degrees. The turret ring is just 6.35mm thick. The two rear gunner turrets give open gaps to the already sparse protection on the vehicle, with their two generally exposed crew members protected waist high by 11.75mm of cast homogenous armor and whichever way they happen to be facing by a 12.4mm rolled homogenous gun shield angled to 11 degrees. The top of the tank is comprised of 6.35mm of armor, except for the turret which has only 6mm of armor, and the two rear gunner turrets which have no armor, and a piece of structural steel on the rear of the tank with only 5mm of armor. The bottom of the tank is protected by 6.35mm of armor. The tank is vulnerable to 7.62mm machine gun fire at certain portions of the side and rear of the tank, even up to 500 meters, and is extremely vulnerable to 12.7mm armor piercing rounds up to 2km at every portion of the vehicle save the front plate, which is vulnerable at 1.5km, and the gun manlet, which is invulnerable. The 6mm of exposed armor at the front of the turret face is a constant hazard when sniping, as a well placed explosive filled round will knock out your loader and gunner from any realistic range. The turret ring can be jammed with even the lightest machine gun fire. The entire tank is vulnerable to high explosive shells. Even 70mm high explosive shells will penetrate anywhere except for the front plate, gun mantlet, and places where structural steel is used as additional armor support. Direct hits by artillery rounds will knock out the tank, as will close proximity hits. 20mm auto cannons at this tier will tear through the tank and its crew in very little time while in an exposed position. The LVT A1 is the best equipped tank at the reserve rating to take an armor piercing high explosive shell and survive. Not due to any type of armor protection, but how well spread out the crew is, and might survive several shots from an inexperienced tanker, or two to three from an experienced one while in a proper hull down cover. Shots to the front plate should be avoided however, and will take out several crew members at once. The LVT A1 is well suited to taking on armor piercing shots when well positioned with the sides of the tank square to the enemy. However, caution should be exercised not to take shots to its front plate or direct rear of the tank with armor piercing shots, as either will kill multiple crew members with each hit. The primary armament on the LVT A1 is the 37mm M6 gun. With a reload rate of 3.7 seconds, it's slightly faster than most tanks it'll be facing at its battle rating, allowing for quick follow up shots needed for its armor piercing rounds to completely knock out the enemy vehicle. Accuracy on this gun is very good. Stock it's able to accurately hit targets out to 300 meters, and hit a target out to 500 meters with very little issue. Upgrading it can actively hit portions of a tank out to 500 meters and hit a target in general out past 1 km, making this gun an excellent marksman weapon. The gun has an average gun depression of negative 10 degrees and exceptional elevation at plus 25 degrees. It generally won't be of any particular disadvantage when shooting down a hill, 
but will have the advantage when engaging opponents' uphills. Due to its gun elevation, short traverse rate, and gun accuracy, it excels in engaging steady air targets out to 1 km. The gun is provided with an unobstructed view of the entirety of the tank, with an above average turret rotation speed stock at 22.8 degrees per second that gets much faster with upgrades at 38.4 degrees per second, and is very snappy for its tier. Primary weapon is equipped with a single plane stabilizer, a simple stabilizer system that only stabilizes on the vertical axis. Stability while the gun is on the move is only effective up to 15 kilometers per hour, at which point the stabilizer disengages and the gun sight will start to bounce around until speed is reduced. The 37mm M6 gun has two varieties of armor-piercing ammunition at its disposal. The M74B1 armor-piercing shot and the M51B1 slash B2 armor-piercing ballistic cap shell. With the M51B1 shell being a direct upgrade in all respects and should be upgraded as quickly as possible in the tech tree. The LVT A1 has three 7.62mm M1919A4 machine guns. In a unique feature exclusive to this vehicle line, two of them are mounted facing the rear of the tank and one is coaxial. The two rear facing mounted machine guns have a horizontal guidance of 60 degrees, meaning they aren't able to engage targets directly to the side of the tank, but have well above average gun elevation of 40 degrees, making them exceptionally capable at engaging enemy aircraft out to one kilometer. Due to the high rotation speeds of the turret, the coaxial gun is also easy to train on enemy aircraft. Each machine gun fires 500 rounds per minute and with all three machine guns trained on a single aircraft, allows for quick elimination of enemy aircraft within 500 meters. Each machine gun belt has a capacity of 250 rounds before requiring reload and takes 10.4 seconds to reload. Each machine gun has 3,000 rounds of ammunition. The machine gun ammunition consists of armor piercing and tracer bullets and are effective against vehicles with extremely light armor and thin skinned trucks out to 1,000 meters. At close range, the secondaries are effective against certain early anti-aircraft vehicles, armored cars, and jamming thin turret rings. If you happen to be engaging within close range with one of these types of vehicles, it generally doesn't hurt to engage with the secondaries in an attempt to dispatch the enemy faster. The tank has average acceleration and above average top speed of 45 km an hour in arcade. It's outmatched by most armored cars and the lightest of tanks, but it's very respectable considering its size. Ultraverse is excellent, allowing for the tank to vastly increase its survivability in emergency situations with proper angling. The maximum reversal speed is 6 km per hour and very slow. It is poor at dodging shots even at long ranges. The tank would be better positioned at range to accelerate out of the way of incoming fire as opposed to reversing. This tank is amphibious, which is very rare at this battle rating. Its amphibious top speed is 13 km per hour, which allows for the tank to still use its stabilizer on the move through water, although rough waves may still cause issue with long range shots. The high tracks allow for this tank to get out of situations or traverse obstacles that would leave other tanks stuck. The LVT A1 has a crew of six and is very well spaced out throughout the tank, with two in the rear, two in the turret, and two at the front of the vehicle. Enemies should be engaged for the side of this tank as it generally keeps the crew deaths to two per shot regardless of the round fired, except for opponents with a clear view and ability to target the tightly packed ammo storage with explosive rounds. Direct shots to the front plate will kill three to five crew members at once regardless of ammo type. The engine at the rear of the tank is too small to protect the majority of the crew, although given the option, engaging opponents from the direct rear over the direct front at least provides some protection to the driver and the machine gunner. When being engaged from the sides, shots in the engine area will almost guarantee a fire due to the position of the fuel tanks in parallel to the engine. The transmission and radio are well placed at the front of the vehicle to absorb a shot taken by an opponent at a lower angle, somewhat inexperienced fighting LVTs, or a snapshot. This tank has five ammo racks four of which are located center mass of the tank, and one which is located just below the commander and gunner in the center of the tank. The tank is capable of holding 104 rounds of ammo total. The first rack below the commander and gunner empties at 92 shells. The second rack empties at 69 shells. The third rack empties at 46 shells. The fourth rack empties at 23 shells. And the final rack empties when the final shot is fired. If you're planning to stay near a capture point or aren't confident in your survivability, take no more than 23 shells to minimize ammo detonation chance. However, if you're planning to snipe for the majority of the match or fight at an extended period away from the capture point, I suggest taking no more than 46 shells for a balance of survivability and ammunition. LBT A1 base model starts with parts, fire prevention equipment, crew replenishment, suspension, filters, and transmission already unlocked. 
When completing modifications to spade the vehicle, I suggest you start with the M51B1-B2 shot, as it is a straight upgrade over your regular armor-piercing ammunition. Then move on to artillery support and engine. After that, moving on to elevation mechanism, adjustment of fire, and horizontal drive for increased turret accuracy and movement. Then finally finish off the modifications tree with tracks, and lastly the brake system. The stock tank does very well at sniping targets up to 500 meters and engaging enemies from its sides. A fully upgraded tank makes for an exceptional long-range fighter up to 1 kilometer if someone can find cover large enough for it to have a hold-down position. The upgraded ammunition allows for consistent criticals even against full up-tier hardened targets at extreme ranges. The weak spot at the top front of the turret means you shouldn't stay in the exact same spot between shots. On maps with river or coast, one should consider using this tank to engage opponents from unexpected areas. As well, tanks with the ability to become amphibious are rare, people who utilize the option are even rarer. This allows for unexpected ambushes from unique map areas. Engaging opponents while in the water is preferable to being out in the open, or even sometimes in partial cover. The water acts as an almost impenetrable shield for the lower portion of the tank and significantly reduces the tank's cross section. The tank is relatively mobile, has a large spaced out crew, and possesses an upgraded armor piercing round they will have it punching far above its weight, but engaging targets with the front plate exposed or targets with rapid-firing weapons from exposed positions will quickly lead to this tank being knocked out. Those that play into the tank's strength of gun accuracy, crew size, and amphibiousness will enjoy what it brings to the table, but for those who don't like to utilize cover and engage in close quarter battles, the life of this tank is likely to be very much shorter than it otherwise could have been. In a close-range battle, the tank performs poorly due to its lack of explosive filler rounds although due to its large number of spaced out crew members can often find itself in a position to retreat out of a kill zone or return fire due to having a portion of its crew inaccessible to the opponent's shells or facing an opponent inexperienced in combating tanks with a spread out crew. Quick hull traverse should allow for proper angling in emergency situations. I give this tank a rating of 3.5 stars out of 5. If you like this content, please consider hitting the like and subscribe buttons below as it helps me get this information out to more people and encourages me to continue producing more content just like this. Should you wish to help out further, my War Thunder invite code is included in the description below. Use it now to get 50 free Golden Eagles. With all your newfound information, you'll be tearing up the battlefield with the LVT-81 or picking apart your opponents in no time. So until we meet again, may your aim be true and your repair costs low.